a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? He got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Be quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to him forever. Father Francis here on a very special video. Uh, this is kind of a in-between video. And I thought it was important that I try to share with you just a few ideas uh, about the coronavirus, the COVID-19 uh, situation that seems to be upon us here in our country. Now, the first thing I want to say is, you know, be calm. Now, that's a, that almost sounds a little bit like a cliche, you know, be calm. Now, it's important to be calm. But what I really want to say is don't give in to fear. That, I think it's a little bit different. You know, saying be calm is, you know, saying like, well, there's nothing to worry about. Don't worry, you know, period. Well, no, th there may be some things to, that we need to be uh, concerned about. And it causes uh, us some, you know, a, 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 maybe a, a, a small amount or maybe a greater amount of trepidation and worry. Uh, my, my spiritual director, they told me, have faith, pray, and don't worry. You know, have hope, faith, have hope, pray. Hope, pray, and don't worry. I think that's what it is. Hope, pray, and don't worry. So to say to somebody, be calm, hmm, well, maybe that would help. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be calm? Well, be calm means don't let fear rule your life, okay? Um, I was uh, just got back a couple of uh, minutes ago. I was down in Carson City all day today doing some things. And, uh, you know, I went to some stores and uh, Costco, Trader Joe's, uh, some other stores. And um, there was a notable um, palpitation in the air. You could tell that people were nervous. Uh, they were very, very uh, focused, <laughs> very focused. And there was, you could sense that there wasn't a whole lot of room for excuse me, for errors. So if somebody kind of cut in front of somebody, they were going to hear about it. Uh, there were some people, I guess, in the parking lot that were uh, fighting over something. And are they, they, anyway, the bottom line is that people are scared. And when we get scared, sometimes that's the wrong thing to do, to give in to that, that fear. So you need, we all need to learn to, and I'm speaking to myself as well, you know, we need to be able to uh, not let fear dictate our lives, okay? So sometimes it does help to take a deep breath and try to uh, not get so riled up. Uh, again, I don't know what this is going to, how this is all going to pan out. None of us do. I think it's basically uncertainty that we are kind of living with right now. How bad is it going to get? Uh, again, I believe that this too shall pass. Again, I'm not saying minimize this and don't treat it as, as if there's nothing going on. But at the same time, be prepared. Be prepared. Um, if you're interested in getting good information on a daily basis, sometimes a, uh, an almost, a, I wouldn't say hourly basis, but there's a Dr. John McDonald. Just type in Dr. John McDonald and uh, he's a UK doc. I guess he was an ER doc in the UK. He's retired now. He's a young fella. He's only 62. I'm 63, so he's a young guy. So Dr. McDonald, and 
uh, he has great information. And the thing I really like about Dr. McDonald, and I've said this on one of my earlier videos, is that he's clear and concise. And he helps you to understand the terminology. A lot of times with medicine and things like this, you know, when it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it has, it's a loaded with lots of medical jargon and terms, uh, we might be tempted to think, well, I don't understand what they're talking about. And so with him and his videos, he breaks down everything. And the one thing I like about him is he is not an alarmist. He's a realist. So you can, I, I trust what he says. Okay, maybe there are other doctors out there that, are, that you like too. But again, this is just not a time to give in to fear. Um, one of the things that Dr. McDonald says is that good health care, good health care is not something that's done to you. It's something that you and I participate in, meaning that you and I can choose to be proactive. Um, I, I'm probably going to sound like a broken record, but basically a lot of the basic uh, hygiene that sometimes we don't maybe do that when we should, especially during cold and flu season, we probably would uh, eliminate 50% of people getting sick if we actually did wash our hands and wash them thoroughly, not touch your face. I'm a, I'm a big face toucher. I'm always touching my face. I always feel like I got some little bug or something on my nose or my eyelash or something. I'm always scratching and itching. And I'm really now trying to be, not, not only am I aware of it, but I'm trying now to do that. If I do have to touch my face or anything, I take like a washcloth and try to, you know, wipe my face down that way and then wring out the washcloth, wash it out, then dry it out. And then it's maybe ready for if I need to touch my face in that way. Um, so again, Good health care is something we participate in. So it means being proactive, uh, taking all those measures. Uh, you know, you, you're out in the store. Uh, when you get back, you know, before you do anything, eat or do anything, wash your hands, wash your hands. Uh, we've got a directive from the bishop yesterday uh, that some of the things that some of our um, things that we're doing in the parish, we've canceled. We, we were having Lenten soup suppers. That is now canceled for the rest of Lent. Uh, our penance service that we were scheduled to have this Saturday, that's been canceled. Our CCD programs are uh, being temporarily canceled until further notice. Again, we're trying to, you know, be proactive, okay? So uh, sometimes people might kind of take this as kind of being antisocial, and we just have to re remember that right now we do need to be very, very uh, aware of our situation, our surroundings, and then also... Uh, practice good hygiene to keep us safe. Um, okay, so that's kind of the practical nuts and bolts of what I wanted to say. And you can hear that in almost any um, person that's doing videos on COVID-19. There I am touching my, my face with my, but I got a little bug in my mouth. So <laughs> you can't win for losing, can you? But I wanted to talk to you more about a spiritual, uh, uh, one of the spiritual things that's, that's going on. And I hope this will help. Now, first of all, there is one practical thing and this is something that I know I can speak to with um, some competence, okay, as a pastor, as a priest. One of the things that I've, I've, over the years of being a priest, the people will sometimes, they will get sick, but they still come to Mass. And, or if they are sick and they miss Mass, then they have to feel like they've got to confess it. The Church teaches that, yes, Sunday Mass is an obligation. As Catholic Christians, we have an obligation to attend Sunday Mass. That being said, however, if you are sick, if you are ill, uh, you are not, you are, you are basically dispensed from coming to Mass on Sunday. So, to be clear, the Bishop of our Diocese, Bishop Soto, uh, basically gave a decree, a dispensation for people that are 60 years and over, people that are ill and infirmed. They do not need to worry about the obligation to attend Mass. They do not incur a penalty if they are sick and they miss Mass. Uh, I don't know where it came from, uh, but there's so many people that do get sick, they miss Mass, and then they feel like they have sinned. Well, they haven't, okay? So please be at peace, be at peace. If you are sick, stay home, get well, and we'll see you in a few weeks, okay? That's what we uh, need to encourage people to do. Again, you do not incur any penalties for missing Mass if you are truly ill, sick, or in the hospital, okay? Now, the thing I do want to talk about, more of a spiritual kind of a presentation here, um, 
is I talked a little bit about, you know, Jesus being in the boat during the storm. And I really love this gospel because I think it really um, touches where we are right now. There is this storm, they, you know, a pandemic uh, called COVID-19. You know, what is going on? You know, how many people are going to get sick? How many people are going to recover? How many people are going to die? You know, so there's this cloud of uncertainty that's now surrounding us. And the thing is that I, I think that it's always interesting when we talk about Lent. This is all happening in the, in the season of Lent. And I might have shared this in kind of a kind of a tangential way in some of my Lenten videos in the last couple of weeks. But, you know, you can start out, you know, Ash Wednesday morning and say, this is what I'm going to do for Lent. Whether you're giving up something or you're going to start a new practice or whatever it is. And I always, I always remember, and a dear friend of mine will, will probably remember this if they're watching this video. You always wake up that day and you say, this is what I'm going to do Lent. God kind of smiles and says, well, we'll see. And then he gives you the real Lent that you are supposed to embrace. And it usually comes as, a, as kind of a shot in the dark. It comes as a surprise. It comes as, and sad to say, it probably comes as something that's very challenging. And it's a, a trial um, or a tribulation that does come our way. And it's, it's not that God's punishing us. God's trying. But I think God kind of wants to get our attention. And this leads me to share with you kind of a little personal thing. I hope it helps. I don't know if it will or not. But again, God is now kind of giving us the Lent is now really starting <laughs> and maybe in earnest. OK, you know, whether you gave up chocolate or you gave up Taco Bell or whatever it was, Dr. Pepper or whatever, uh, that's nice. That's all fine and good. There's nothing wrong with that. But the real Lent, uh, the real season of Lent is probably starting for a lot of us right here and now. Now, I'll share with you something that I hope will make sense to some some people. Um, many years ago, I was an army chaplain and I, uh, went to, I, I got a chance to go to Europe and it was one of the, one of my dreams, one of my bucket list kind of things, wanted to go and, and, and go to Europe, not just go to Europe, but I actually lived there for three years. And it was a real blessing. It was a wonderful, wonderful, rich experience. Um, and I loved, I loved every minute of it. However, uh, the, the deal was I had to go to Bosnia for a year. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. So I was willing to, to do that. And Bosnia was not an actual declared war, but it, was, it wasn't a combat zone. I want to be honest there. It wasn't a combat zone, so I'm not a quote-unquote combat vet. But, um, but I am a veteran, and, uh, but I did serve time in Bosnia. And it was a dangerous place. There were lots of landmines there. And there were still people that were angry enough, and maybe if they didn't like you, they'd pull out a gun and shoot you. It wasn't, again, like a, a warfare combat, but it was, it was violence. There was violence there. And sometimes, you know, you would get a very angry Bosnian person, and they could get very, very hostile very, very quick. Long story short, um, when, I went to, when I went to Bosnia, when I went to uh, Europe, you know, again, I kind of felt like, well, the army is sending me to Europe, and I'm going to have to go to Bosnia first for a whole year. Now... What, I, what I'm trying to share with you is simply this, is that, yeah, the United States Army sent me to Bosnia for a specific purpose. And I did my job. as I did my ministry as a priest. I said mass. I heard confessions. You know, I, um, you know, counseled soldiers that were in trouble. You know, I did all those things that the United States Army wanted me to do. But God sent me to Bosnia for a whole other reason. There was a spiritual component to the Bosnia experience for me. And what I'm trying to share with people right now is that this whole COVID-19 virus, there is a deeper spiritual meaning that's happening. God is using this virus. And again, he can be using it for so many different purposes. He could be using it to maybe get the church's attention. You know, hey, church, wake up. You know, um, I just want to say this in passing. I hope I don't sound too critical, but could it be? I'm just going to put a question out there. We saw real idolatry taking place in the Vatican just a couple months ago, and now all of Italy is in lockdown. Just saying there may be, there may be a coincidence. 
But, uh, but I was going to say is simply this, is that, again, there's a spiritual component to COVID-19. There's, God is permitting this to happen. Now, I'm not saying God is trying to punish us per se, but I do believe, without a doubt, he's trying to get our attention. He's trying to help us to wake up and see what really matters. And a lot of times we have just been so... Um, We've been so distracted by, you know, so many worldly things. And, and God maybe is saying, folks, you need to pay more attention to the fact that this life is very short indeed. Eternity is forever. And, and so there's a spiritual component to this whole uh, coronavirus thing. And so just getting back to my little story to hopefully tie it all up here. When I went to Bosnia, yeah, the army sent me there to minister to soldiers. And I did that. But personally, God sent me to Bosnia for something that only I could do there. And I'll explain. As a recovering alcoholic, I was working through the 12 steps. And one of the steps was that you had to uh, write down all of the people that you have, um, had, you have uh, offended. People that you uh, either harmed or offended. And then you had to... Uh, you had to make amends. You had to be willing to make amends uh, to people that you also have harmed and hurt. Well, a lot of times those things are kind of interlocked. You know, people uh, hurt us, so we hurt them back. And that was my case for uh, many of the people that I was make, trying to make amends to. When I was in Sacramento, California, I couldn't make an amends. I would write that, write all this out, and I'd write the person's name down, and I would try to say, I'm sorry for what I did. But then I'd always remember... The, all the things that they did to me. And that just, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But going 9,000 miles away to a completely foreign country and being all alone, uh, pretty much, I mean, I had my, I had my chaplain's assistant and I had my, you know, my higher echelon to give me orders. <laughs> good people though, all good people. But the thing was that I had to go there. It was only there that I could do this amends and write those letters that I needed to write. And you know what happened? I'll never forget, I think it was uh, New Year's Eve. I had like a whole bunch of letters, people that I had uh, offended and needed to also ask an apology from, uh, or apologize to. And I remember going to the little mailbox and dropping in all those letters. And once I did that, this sense of freedom came over me like I never experienced before. And then all of a sudden, I could, as I turned away from that mailbox, I could hear God saying, this is why I brought you to Bosnia. And I would say that the COVID virus, COVID-19, is all about God has something he's trying to, trying to minister to us. He's trying to get our attention. He's trying to let us, you know, see maybe our, our sinfulness, you know, and, and, but in a positive way to say, I want to be set free from this. So I do believe that this may be a gift of God. I I know that probably sounds really bizarre to say that. Maybe the COVID-19, the coronavirus, may be for some people an actual gift of God. Not because they get sick and get, you know, really hurt or injured by it, or maybe even die. But maybe it's it's a real wake-up call for them to really recognize what's really meaningful. You know, Lord, teach us, you know, to... uh, you know, not pay so much attention on the passing things of this earth, but on the things that truly endure, those eternal things that truly endure. Okay, well, God bless you. I want you to say stay healthy out there, be safe, and uh, we'll see you in, our, in the next video. God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.